All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and I forgot to turn off auto zoom, but I caught the problem in time. So I could have started a lot earlier. However, um, <clears throat> I was looking more into uh, you know coding and networking and all that stuff because I was actually looking up uh, tower defense uh, pre-made templates and stuff on the asset store, and then for some reason something mentioned about networking, and then I was like, okay, well obviously I'm very interested in that because. The most difficult part of game program is actually multiplayer, of course. So, you know, I was reading a bunch of different options. In fact, I haven't even finished yet. It was this thread if anyone is curious because there are a lot of networking solutions out there, right? Smart Fox Server, because I play a game called Bit Heroes, and they use Smart Fox Server. So this is, uh, you don't have to read the whole thing, but there's a new Unity networking solution that might actually be this that might actually work for me because it has everything that I need. It's easy to use. Uh, it's built into Unity, so I don't have to worry about a bunch of other crap, which is like, you know, because, I mean, yeah, JavaScript seems very easy to learn, but, you know, it's like, uh, right? And, it's, and then, of course, it's built into Unity, so I don't have, I probably, there's probably a million things I don't have to worry about because it's already built in and done for me. I just like go, oh, yeah, send RPC call, and then just that, and then that's it. You know, the Unity engine already has everything it needs. So it's very flexible. And then because they're using something called DOTS, which is Data Oriented Something System. Ah, oh, shit. What, what, what was it called again? Uh, DOTS. Uh, data Orient. Oh, my God. All right. Let's just DOTS Unity. Uh, data Oriented Technology Stack. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I don't know what this is, but this seems to be like Unity's like really big, big thing. But basically, it's exactly what it says here. It's a high-performance multi-thread dots that takes advantage of multi-core processors, create user-richer experiences. So basically, like most computers nowadays, especially my computer, uh, they run on like four, six, eight CPUs, right? If you have like a PlayStation 4 or 5 or Xbox or whatever the hell it's up to these days, because I don't have a console, right? Those also use multiple CPUs. So... You know, long story short, uh, you know, taking advantage of all that efficiently has always been a problem up until recently. So now you're seeing the benefits of that. So basically, you can do a lot more, render a lot more shit, and it'll actually be pretty performant, meaning it'll run well. So it's actually uh, pretty cool. And then they're going to use all of this for networking. So I don't know. But Unity's been pretty mum about it. So I don't know. I might still have to use SmartFox or Azure PlayFab. <laughs> Uh, but they both use JavaScript. I know a little bit of it, you know, from the Zenba tutorials. So, uh, I guess I'll worry about that. But yeah, it's pretty obvious to me that I definitely know how to get around the basic problem of a new multiplayer game, which is, you know, getting people to play on a server. You don't need them to play on a different server right? if you design your game differently, right? And so in my case, let's, go actually, let's actually go to BitHeroes. Uh, congregate. Uh... Hopefully they'll just have like some screenshots because I don't want this thing to load the JavaScript. Uh, it's gonna load the game. Uh, okay, all right. I don't want this thing to load the because you know flat. I mean, I guess Flash is better these days. But uh, yeah, here's here's something pretty typical. All right. So okay, it's loading the screenshot. So it's basically a two-bit game. All right, like two bit, no, two D game, right? And everything's basically automated, right? And you don't actually play with other people in real time. Sometimes you can, in some situations, but for the most part, you just log in, spend your energy, and then log back out. All right, it's just like those old uh, Mafia Wars games on Facebook where you just have your energy bar. But this one just it just looks different, but it's essentially the same concept. So it's great because all it does is just pulls data from all the other players on your server that played. And then you just play against an instance of them so they don't have to be present. And you just, you know, fight and whatever. And they do the same. And then you accumulate points. So whoever has the most points, they get the weekly reward for being the best or something. All right. And then the rewards scale down as you go lower. So this is how I want to design most of my multiplayer games. Eventually, because and that's how you solve it, because you got to create a very good single player experience that does not require other players uh, to be present, all right? Because again, have you ever played a multiplayer game and then no one was there to play with you? It's like, th like this sucks, and you just uninstall the game. <laughs> so you don't want that, right? You have to have a very good single-player experience. 
So, you know. So yeah, I have it all figured out. So the hard those hard parts, you know, I have figured out. It's just the technical problems that I'm having, which is, you know, how to code. So yeah. And yeah, I've read more of the Jeff Bezos book, of course, last night, but um and Moon Moon actually takes Wednesdays off. So that was actually kind of nice. I used to play more Tarkov and read more of the book. Uh so far it's just more details. I don't even remember what it was. But yeah, Jeff Bezos is like a hardcore slave driver, though. Like, I am not going to run my company like that. All right, I don't need to be the best. I just have to be very good at what I do. All right, just look, just look at the damage that uh, you know Nick Fuentes and the Groupers are able to do. Right, he's obviously not the best, but he doesn't have to be. Right, he's just some guy that came out literally out of nowhere, and then he's taking on like you know fake right conservative uh, ink. Right. <clears throat> Now, of course, can he hold power? That remains to be seen. Um, you know, uh, I still have people who I'm following, who the few people are left are still unfollowing me, and I don't know what the fuck the problem is, right? I never said anything bad to them, right? I never never said anything. It's like, really, well, what, what, what are you doing? <clears throat> you know, we're following the same people. We're I'm retweeting the people they're following, so it's like, what's the problem? And it's just like, it's just very annoying. It's just very annoying. You know, so I don't know, but for from what I can still see, I'm still pretty skeptical skeptical about the concert, the new the the new true right being able to hold power when this is all said and done. Uh, so far, I'm still not uh, uh, impressed, which is why I kind of want to move away. But I still like politics, but the problem is it's like uh, there's so much crap that I have to put up with, and it's just like you know I just don't want to deal with it, you know. Honestly, I'd rather just be more like Trump. It's just, you know, when he wasn't running for president, he, he just runs around and does his little thing, all right? And then nobody really seems to care. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to be doing, all right? You know, I'll have my hot wife. I don't know. I mean, now, I mean, now that I'm Christian, I probably shouldn't be sleeping around with so many hot women. But I don't know. Like, you put a really hot white girl or really just any hot girl in front of me, Right, and she's uh, she was she's ready and willing to sleep with me, and you know I'm in a very horny state. I don't know, man. It might be hard for me to say no, you know. So, yeah, I'll get rich, have my company. I'm still trying to figure out what my um what I actually want to do because I've written six of my interests. I haven't written down my weaknesses yet, though. I mean, I kind of already know what they are. So, uh, let me see. Yeah, I guess I could share this. Um, Get a shareable link. There we go. A link sharing is on. Okay. Hmm. Anyone with the link can view. Wait, can I turn this off? Only specific people can access. All right. Let me make sure I turn this off right after. Because I probably want to put something like proprietary in here. Um, let me see. This is going to take a while. Ah, uh, come on. This probably doesn't help them using shitty Firefox along with a really shitty server location. Holy shit, can you? There we go. Wow, this is so bad. It's literally missing everything else. All right. So I wrote down all my interests, right? I'm trying to figure out the others, but this seems to be what I came up with, right? Commercial real estate, obviously, specifically commercial real estate. Movies and TV, because that's what God wants me to eventually do. So there's that. But of course, uh, this is very expensive. Three is video games, duh. But of course, as I'm finding, it's less, much less expensive, but much more technically involved, right? So that's where I'm at. And of course, money investing business, that's just my thing, right? Content creation. Technically, this is content creation, so it's like, yeah, that probably counts. That's why I'm thinking, I'm trying, try, I'm probably trying to create some sort of like entertainment company, right? So I'd be kind of like Disney, but I also kind of want to run my own little media thing too, right? So we review video games and movies and shit and have our own little aggregator. Kind of like how like Warner Brothers owns their own shit, right? They own Rotten Tomatoes. They're manipulating everything, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, okay, you know, maybe I should invade that space. It's actually pretty good um, content. And more importantly, be uh, also would eventually be pretty good free marketing too, right? Because 
there's well, enough money I can hire people to help me do all this shit, especially the coding. But I also need to market the game anyway, so you need money for that. Right? If you have a good enough product, you know, marketing will pay for itself. That's why everyone pays for marketing, right? I mean, even to this day, like as big as Square Enix is when they made Final Fantasy VII Remake, right? I looked up their stock price last night. It was like $5.2 billion when I was, you know, writing these interests. They're still doing marketing. They're still paying for marketing and ads. So, you know, uh, so even if you're famous, you still have to market shit, all right? Let people know. So, yeah. Uh, and, of course, politics, talking, radio show, hosting, talking. Show. This stuff I actually love doing. I would love to have my own talk show, but, I mean, I don't know how that would fit into any of this. So it's more like a just a side project thing. And at some point, I probably can't talk about certain topics either because... You know, once I actually be, well, let's say I actually become like Square Enix, right? I've got a successful movie business and video game business, right? There's probably certain things I probably can't really talk about yet, right? You know, so, you know, because other businesses, they might like me, but they're like, you know, it's like, yeah, I can easily see like, because Square Enix seems to, uh, has some sort of funny partnership with Arby's. The, I don't know, actually Arby's looks pretty good to eat at. Right, you know the Arby's guy might go up to you like, "Hey, Jason, we kind of like you, but I don't know, man. Your recent product, it's like, yeah, I don't think we want to. We can't, we can't work with you, man. We don't want our customer. Like, your a lot of customers are like the people that you you just bash. Like, they're gonna get pretty mad at us. <laughs> we can't take your ads. So it's like, ah, damn it. So you know, so I don't know. That, that's why it's uh, that's why it's gonna suck. But you know, what are we gonna do? Right. Well, at least the compensation is, yeah, I'm rich and famous, so. I don't know. I'll, I'll find out the truth when uh, when I get up there, so, you know. Actually, a lot of you will probably find out, too, when you get up there, too. All right, because there's a few of you that are actually smart enough to actually just follow what I'm doing. Yeah, so there there's that, and then I'm still floating around, so, yeah. So I kind of want to just finish today's uh, video relatively quickly, so I get back to my research. And uh, let's see. So Bitcoin searches for this week are still 12. Cryptocurrency, uh, okay, so this is actually accurate. All right, very nice. Bitcoin does that 63.9%. 24 hour volume is 141.6 billion. Bitcoin's at 74.37, so pretty nice. Uh, Litecoin's at 42.78, very good. Uh, dog coins at 259 million market cap, very nice. And Steam, where is Steam? Steam is 15.51 cents. So, all right. So, overall, things are looking relatively stable. Bitcoin is kind of back up a bit. Um, I don't know. I guess the spark lines are not drawing properly today as usual. All right. Uh, but, all right. Things are going up. Uh, looks like the equity markets are also up for some reason. In uh, Let's see. Uh, so, prices look reasonable. Like, they're up what they should be. Um Really would have been nice if I could have done covered calls on AMZA. Stock slightly higher after jobless claims. Data and there are 4.4 million people on, uh, filed for unemployment. So I guess people, U.S. business activity hits fresh record lows. <clears throat> They're still on their own chips. All right, so it looks like the market was pricing in a lot more doom than they thought. And then the, here's the actual data. So now they're actually... Uh, buying shit back up and on top of that we are actually reopening all right uh, and, our, and yeah I mean New York State will probably be an exception of course than anything highly dense uh, but you know places are reopening uh, Ohio I, I think I might have mentioned this yesterday but Ohio and the Chicago and Illinois that whole upper the upper Midwest section near the lake especially like they're all discussing how to reopen and so are other uh, states as well so you know people are reopening um and on top of that uh i still don't know how liberals in general like i'm talking about the shit libs the ones that just frothing at the mouth and hate trump and conservatives and christians and whatever i don't actually know how they actually feel about the shutdown right because they're just too busy just screaming at you know trump and whatever but uh, the problem is it's really hurting liberals a lot. They can't go to see movies. They can't have their diversity marches. They can't have their pride marches. They can't do anything that liberals generally, you know, because they generally tend to be a lot more extroverted. And right now you can't do any of that. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and of course, 
conservatives are like, yeah, fuck that, <laughs> and they're already protesting. So already liberals are just feeling, you know, left out. Um, so with that being said, I don't know their breaking point yet. I haven't really seen any indicator of that just yet. So uh, that's actually fine because, uh, again, I treated this before. This hurt shutdowns hurt liberals way more than it does conservatives. And yeah, you know, conservatives definitely take hits, but uh, liberals are going to suffer much more. So technically, if we were much more sinister, right, we would actually want the shutdown to continue pretty much indefinitely uh, because it would just simply completely destroy left-wing ideology and all its adherents, right? So, uh, but yeah. But anyway, the, the point is um, everyone, as Democrats especially, know they have to fucking reopen something, right? Because... They're getting weaker. The right is getting even stronger, and people are becoming more conservative at the same time. Like it's literally the complete opposite of their entire like existence. So you can bet your ass that you're gonna they're gonna work surprisingly hard to try to uh, reopen something. Uh, but funny enough, liberals also tend to be very scared of a lot of things, right? They always say conservatives are fearful and scared. Yeah, for the I mean, sometimes I guess maybe. But liberals are definitely way more scared. So, you know, and of course, it's classic liberal projection. So, you know, fear really is keeping them in line. Like, literally, like Grand Moff Tarkin and, you know, Star Wars A New Hope, right? But even then, eventually, fear will turn into anger and frustration. It's like, you know what? I don't really care anymore. Just reopen the goddamn thing. I'll take my chances of coronavirus. I haven't seen that with liberals yet, but that's what I'm looking for. Once that happens, and I'm using Twitter, um, just basic Twitter to use that. Uh, and the replies, uh, and random sample, well, relatively random sample size. Once I see that happen, then I expect everything to be back to normal, right? Um, because I don't know about you, but I'm just really sick and tired of this coronavirus shit, right? Now I'm seeing ads when I watch Twitch, like, it's the new normal, we're here to help. Like, that's nice, but I'm really sick and tired of hearing about coronavirus. I just want things to go back to normal. Yeah. So anyway, uh, JMC coins going up and down like crazy. Uh, there's actually a lot of activity. So I'm just going to say it's 8 to 11. Uh, pretty big range right now, which is fine by me. Crypto's going up. JMC's up. Apparently 404 is also going up. So it's at like 8 to 9. It was as high as 10 at some point, supposedly. But 8 to 9 for sure. It's making a lot of money. 2 by 2 coins also going up. 73 to 76 or 77 actually. So a lot, so a lot of activity going on. Maybe those Trump bucks are starting to finally uh, fill in. And the Senate yesterday did, or a couple of days ago, pr finally approved the damn stimulus plan. So they're replenishing the funds. So hopefully I'll get my Trump bucks because a lot of people still haven't gotten it yet. Um, and I had to actually tell the IRS my bank account info too because, like, even though I've been following my taxes religiously every single year, using the exact same info, for some reason the IRS doesn't even know my Direct deposit info. It's like, come on. It's like, are you serious? Right? Just, ah. You know? Like, you you cheat them out of a thousand bucks and the IRS will hunt you down, but you pay your taxes like clockwork before the deadline, before their servers are overload every year, uh, like clockwork, and they don't know anything about you. It's like, it's like, what the hell, man? I guess that's a, that's a perfect description of how uh, governments in general just work. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. These, these. Uh, yeah. Well, I have to admit, at least this bit here was done. Uh, raid is not nearly as irritating as the old one. Compound coins at sixty five hundred to sixty nine hundred satoshi of a dog coin. So it'll uh, meander for a little bit. Um, let's see. So we're definitely reading this article. Uh, da, 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 da. We already know that from yesterday. Uh, oil has nothing to do with Bitcoin, not really. When he would buy Bitcoin. So basically Mark Cuban, I don't know, Mark Cuban, I don't know, I would say he's 50-50 on Bitcoin. Maybe he's honest about his opinions about it, but maybe he's trying to short Bitcoin too. I mean, I don't know. But he doesn't come off as somebody that would want to short Bitcoin though. So, because he definitely seems to have a good amount of empathy too, so... I guess I guess I guess I'll have to lean slightly towards he really just believes there's something uh, I guess he really believes there's something wrong with Bitcoin. That's why he hasn't taken the thing in yet uh, Taken the plunge, but he's interested enough. So we're reading the lawsuit 
controversial animals plan b update yeah i don't care this plan b guy is just just as dumb as but he's not as aggravating as tony vase BMWD driving expansion, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Payments go digital. Series shows Bitcoin, crypto must overcome major trust issues. This is hilarious. Tip Draper, blah, blah, blah. major crypto says, uh, crypto replaces US dollars worth reserve currency, but Bitcoin isn't up to the challenge. No, this is, this is not exactly as true as it sounds literally. The US dollar would just simply become a digital dollar. That's all that you have to do. And then that's it. The US dollar will remain the reserve currency. I mean, I don't think people realize just how simple this problem is, right? You know, like, no, fiat currency will not die. Not now, not in the past, and not ever, all right? With one exception. We enter the world of Star Trek, where money is legitimately useless, right? We're talking pre-Picard, because apparently Picard, like, completely screws that up. So, you know, it may happen in our lifetimes, it may not, right? I mean, a hundred years, a couple hundred, a lot can happen in a couple hundred years, you know? Uh, or even less than that, actually. So, uh, with, and with that being said, um, oh yeah, Jeff Bezos is actually a huge fan of Star Trek The Next Generation. In fact, the reason why he's bald and got that egghead shape thing is because he's, uh, he's like Captain Picard. Act, like, that's what the book I'm reading says, The Everything Store. So I thought that was kind of interesting, and he threw a party when he saw when the series finale of TNG, uh, which I love, all good things. That was like the that's still my favorite uh, all time episode of Star Trek, and there were a lot of great episodes too. Uh, Tapestry was also pretty good too. I don't really watch those in a long time, but yeah, I really like those. And um, uh, what you might call it? So he threw a party in his Upper West Side apartment. So. That was interesting. I do, I am curious to know though, why does he care so much about global warming? Like a lot of rich people seem to really worry about that. So do they know something that I don't? And number two, are they running some sort of scam? So yeah, but I don't know. Well, uh, 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 well I don't know, when I become a billionaire, I'll let you know. But it's also pretty easy to solve because again, we just, just have everyone use nuclear power and then at that point, our CO2 scrubber technology will be like so advanced and cheap. Just deploy that over there. So it's not even that, that big of a problem. So that's why I'm already assuming it's some kind of like financial scam or political scam. Uh, Trump, Biden, so nothing's changed. I can't believe, like Joe Biden couldn't even like... I forgot what it was. I don't. I think I retweeted it though. But Joe Biden was giving another interview. He couldn't even get certain things. Oh, he was interviewing Al Gore, and then he couldn't. And then he completely screwed up his words with the global warming thing. And Al Gore was literally just visibly like annoyed. And people are still gonna vote for Joe Biden. They're like, this is just ridiculous. Like, hate is really a truly powerful emotion because again, people are too fucking retarded and emotionally unstable to be allowed to vote. Right, and this is the fucking result. Like people hate Trump so much that they actually want to elect a senile, brain dead person for president. You know, uh, and it's just ridiculous. But on the other hand, Jesus brought the good word, and everyone wound up trying to kill him anyway. Well, actually, they did kill him anyway. So I guess it's kind of like the same thing. Oh, uh, da 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 da. Oh, this thing has so much. Uh, uh, yeah, really good. Far better than fake news monster. Movie, or they all had the power as they nearly once thought. Yes. No. And when this is a, actually, you know what? No. And when this is all over, and when this is all over, we the people will make sure they never regain any power ever again. I mean, they'll probably still be around, believe it or not, but they just won't be the powerhouse that they are now. Uh, okay, I'm going to start with... Let's see. Because one thing I like to see is, you know, which gets more impressions, my shitty Twitter account or the replies? So that'd be interesting. And then I don't think there's anything new here. Huh? What is this? Uh, obviously, I'm not watching this because A, I don't like this asshole, and then B, he's not... Like, there, like, there's nothing entertaining about this guy. And number two, it's too long. So, And I already looked at it off stream, so nothing really new. He did have an interesting thing here, though. Um, if you're shut down, 
and you don't like it, uh, blame him, not your local official. So I find that kind of interesting. Now he's taking one for the team. Of course, Bloomberg's an asshole, so I'm not going to retweet that. Uh, plus, I don't trust him. All right, where are we at? 25 minutes. All right, let's see. So YouTube uh, responded pretty quickly. Uh, let's just hit this button here. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to let it go. Skip. YouTube is responding to a lawsuit filed by Ripple. Uh, the lawsuit demands... Okay, we already know that from yesterday. In an interview with Bloomberg Tech anchor Emily Chang, Brad Garlinghouse says fraudsters were hard at work. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. In response, YouTube is refusing the notion that it ignores fraudulent activity as a platform. Cuddy says it's taking down millions of suspicious, suspicious videos in an effort to police the platform. We take abuse on our platform seriously and take action quickly when we detect violations of our own policies like scams and impersonations. I would actually agree with that. It's just that uh, they just there's just a lot of crap they've got. Also, if they, want, if they want to use an automated solution, they're going to wind up banning a lot of innocent channels, right? That's what happened with Bitcoin. Probably happens a lot, too, with non-cryptocurrency-related stuff. I hate to say this, but apparently Tony Vase was apparently considered one of those innocent people. I mean, he has his channel back, so... Ripple controls more than half the... the, 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 the. Wait, that's it? Uh, that's it? Come on. <sighs> All right. This is why I don't like fucking Daily Hold'em. Like, I don't know, they used to be really good, now they just pump out garbage. YouTube responds XRP. Let's see if we can find a different article. Maybe we can get some more details. Great. Uh, Ripple lawsuit, Ripple Lab, that's 19 hours ago. Not surprisingly, it looks like Google does not want to be indexing this thing. I guess they already feel pressured. All right. Okay. So, all right. Right off the bat, YouTube does seem to be nervous about this. Hmm. Interesting. Or they just simply don't care. Hmm. There must be an XRP Twitter. Let me see. Maybe they got something over here. Oh, this is media. I don't want to read that. Uh, I just wanted to see if they had something pictured. I see a lot of Asian people in here. Uh, eight other people I know. Uh, from okay to be ripple, remember that already be alert before these are not official. Okay, took them on their Earth Day 20 hours ago. Oh, here we go. Bloomberg Technology. Wow, this might actually okay. Yeah, he seems really triggered. Uh, I've been you've been hurt. Uh, apparently, he'll actually on YouTube because this is the episode of the Impala, and they've done not next to nothing. Our sponsor constant takedown requests. You do there is in the case of an industry why probably a lack of accountability. Victor first jumped through hoops to report these scams. Oftentimes, that doesn't even work. When Instagram told me <clears throat> I wasn't being impersonated, three or four. Be aware, I'll respond to the thing her request from me after seven weeks and multiple asks to take down Brad XRP. I get this form rejection. And so you're not telling me that it actually is me. Uh, platform abuse. Okay, so he's not talking all, at all about censorship. He's just pissed that, like, you know, people are scamming. Okay. Well, if you're right, it's more probably to repair from rampant scams. Yeah. See, I was about to retweet this when I realized, you know, he he does he wants more censorship. Uh, I'm not sure how I really feel about this. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Brad, talk to us about the impetus for this lawsuit. Emily, I think now more than ever, we are living in a time when seeing you know, some of the large tech platforms 
not act in the best interest of the, the broad kind of consumer population is a real issue. And what we are seeing is scammers are taking advantage of these platforms, both things related to COVID. So frankly, this has been going on as it relates to cryptocurrencies, as it relates to Ripple and specifically XRP. It's been going on for well over a year. And for us, it was time, kind of enough is enough. You know, uh, we had worked on this case earlier in the year, waited a bit, uh, given that some of the things were happening in the world and felt like now is the time to, you know, to not whine about this, but actually to, to do something about it. You two told us in a statement, we take abuse of our platform seriously and take action quickly when we detect violations of our own policies like scams and impersonations. Um, you know, they've been pointing out how many millions of videos uh, they've been removing. Why do you think the action that they're taking is not enough? Well, Emily, I can tell you firsthand, uh, I can give many examples of where we have reported known fraud, known scams that are occurring, rep accounts representing to be me, to be personally, and it's taken them weeks, if not months, to remove them. There have been times when we followed up three, four, five times, and you know we're met with resistance. And look, it isn't unique to just YouTube. This is happening with other players in the industry, but what you're seeing is scammers are going more to uh, going more to YouTube because they're the least effective at, at getting them taken down. So, you know, uh, there's many examples I could give. You know, even today, I sent out an email to all the employees at Ripple, and in my email, I included two examples that were live this morning. And I can tell we got their attention because during the course of the day, they took one of them down. So, but this is a known problem, and they have not been responsive. And I'm frankly, I'm thrilled that even filing the lawsuit has gotten their attention a little bit. All right, so he just wants more censorship. <clears throat> now, now what's interesting is YouTube was surprisingly quiet about this, and you don't even see any uh, uh, info about it. So again, I still remain pretty neutral because on the one hand, he wants more censorship. On the other hand, I like the idea that someone's sticking it to big tech. Unfortunately, it's just you know a bunch of rich people getting angry at other rich people. So... It, it, it's just basically a huge cluster fuck all around um but all right uh i don't even know what i'm going to title this because i don't know uh, i guess i'll just title it uh, youtube responds but the in uh their response is very tepid i think that would be the correct word if you like what you saw read or heard hit the like button the follow button <clears throat> or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from or on my youtubes at youtube.com forward slash uh jmc radio make sure you smash that subscribe on the right hand side of this page so you can continue uh growing this channel yeah all right so hopes i'm done for the day i'll see you all tomorrow's video uh things look to be uh working pretty well i mean i mean i was not expecting things to be going up today but hey i'll take it I mean, I guess uh, the doom and gloom has not as bad as it sounds, which is true. And I guess the reopening efforts are increasing. But again, it's still too early to tell, so uh, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, and we just have to wait. That's all it is, you know. I had to endure, or rather, we had to endure a Bitcoin cryptocurrency bear market for like, what, a year and a half, two years? Uh, I'm sure we can wait a couple of months for this stupid shutdown thing. But with that being said, um, yeah, like when winter comes later this year and they start doing like, we need to do in our shutdown, we get really pretty angry about that, actually. You know, but by then we should have uh, the election. Trump hopefully should win re-election, I think. And then, you know, I better see Trump going really ham on this stuff, uh, you know, because you know, when, when Obama won re-election in 2012, he went pretty ham, too. So, you know, like, he went all out, right? Um, you know, he got his policy, like, he got his Obamacare solidified or passed. It's been a while, right? Uh, he got gay marriage passed, essentially, in the Supreme Court. Uh, he pro And he did a bunch of other things that just, oh, yeah, and he went out and he used the IRS and others to, like, go after conservatives and Breitbart and stuff. So, you know, Obama really went out of his way to, like, fuck everybody over that he didn't like, right? You know, and then reward his supporters. So I'm hoping Trump does the same thing. Otherwise, it's like, you know, why did why the why the hell did we vote for him, right? And obviously, Trump is going to try his best. So I'm just hoping Trump's going to have the steam power already left to do it. Of course, the problem is he'll be 
held back by Jared Fuckner, right? Uh, Kuckner, right? Jared Kushner. So, I don't know. We'll see how that all plays out. Anyway, see you all in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to go back to my research. Thanks. Johnson Chen, JFC Coin, 404 Coin. <clears throat> Again, I have to admit, I'm a little surprised that YouTube is very slow and tepid in their response to something like this. Uh, so, I don't know. We're definitely going to keep a, a, an eye on this, right? So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I still expect this to just be thrown out. It's like it's a pretty easy thing for Google to deal with. But maybe Google knows they might actually have uh, very weak legs to stand on because they know everyone's getting angry at them, too. Right? I mean, I already made my piece. So, you know, I'm just stuck on YouTube, right? But, you know, they, uh, I'm not loyal to these guys. Right? I'm just here because I basically have to, right? That's what I... I, <clears throat> I mean, now that I'm older right not a kid right you know i've been around and i don't even want to say my age anymore because apparently that's actually an opsec problem uh even though you could easily find it eventually i get famous uh what should i call it um i never actually know what it's like to actually be under the thumb of a tyrannical monopoly until now right in this case big tech censorship so um because I didn't have, a, I wasn't, I didn't feel as affected when Microsoft was getting hit with their antitrust lawsuit. I was like, hey, you know, like all the software sucks except Microsoft. Can we just use Microsoft shit? You know, so uh, be interesting to actually see firsthand what it's like. All right, so all right, so what does this mean? Well, the Ripple, well, Ripple wants more censorship, right? So he doesn't give a shit. Uh, but with that being said, Google does seem to be nervous, so. Uh, that's uh, that's going to be an interesting good thing to look out for.